Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, our most gracious, loving Father, you've called us out of the world and into your marvelous light and truth. Lord, we're here today to celebrate, to be in your presence, to be with one another, and to witness the life-transforming grace that you've had on one of our dear young people. Father, we thank you so much for, for being with us, being in our hearts, directing our lives, directing our paths, and giving us everything that we need to be successful, to be strong, healthy, intelligent, and to move forward in faith, in courage, declaring the goodness of God to a dying world. Be with us now. Be with each one of us as we worship here today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, you may be seated. Welcome to the Bay Roberts Seventh-day Adventist Church. I'm so excited to uh, see so many faces. I just want to <clears throat> give a warm welcome to all our visitors and all our family, visiting family and friends. Our, today, uh, we are joining two Pathfinder Clubs together, St. John's uh, Pathfinder Club. And we're so, ni we're so nice to see you guys and that you've come here today and our Bay Roberts Pathfinder Club. Uh, we are just starting off here in Bay Roberts, but we're very excited uh, to have a club and uh, we're working to grow the club and to have all the things that we need to, to have it. Uh, we want to also <clears throat> extend a warm invitation to uh, Newfoundland Seventh-day Adventist Mission Leadership. Uh, we have Pastor Corkum and his wife here today. Thank you for coming. And we also want to uh, thank our uh, visiting guest, uh, Pathfinder Regional Director of Newfoundland, Joseph Baffey, you and your family. Welcome to the Bay Roberts Seventh-day Adventist Church. Today is an important day for Erica McIntyre. She is making the decision to follow Jesus with her whole heart and her whole life. And this is an exciting time. And so we're here to celebrate. We're here to be together and uh, to encourage her and to be inspired by her in this decision. We also have another first here today is that our speaker is going to be her sister, Selena McIntyre. And I know the McIntyre family has been here and we know them and we love them, but this is the first time that she's taken this role to speak from the platform. And so we want to encourage her as well and to be inspired by her dedication to serve the Lord. Um, that's what Pathfinders is all about. It's raising leaders, not only for the church, but for our societies, for our schools, for our workplaces, for everything that we do. We become leaders and examples unto others to encourage them and strengthen them to walk in the Lord. So I'm at this time going to ask Selena to come and join me, and we're going to uh, conduct the Pathfinder Pledge, the Pathfinder Law, and then we will end with the Pathfinder song. And if, uh, if we're good to go, we will go. All right. And Pathfinders, I would like you to stand at attention, please. And the congregation can join in, too, if you'd like. If you know it. <laughs> yeah, if you know it. <laughs> so the pledge. So place your right hand over your heart. By the grace, grace of God, God I'll, I'll be, be pure, pure and, kind and kind and true. true. I will I'll keep, keep the, the Pathfinder law. law. I will be, be a servant, servant of God and a friend to man. Now the law. The law oh, is for me to keep, keep the morning watch, watch do my honest part, care for my body, body keep, keep a level eye, eye be courteous and obedient, obedient walk softly in the sanctuary, sanctuary keep a song in my heart, and go on God's, God's errands. Amen. And now I invite everyone to sing along to the Pathfinder theme song. seated. 
I'm going to, at this time, uh, invite Joseph to come up here, and he's going to give uh, the Pathfinders a, the Pathfinder charge. <coughs> Thank you, Pastor, and thank you to the church for the invitation. In fact, I was so excited when I had the invitation to come in here because I had never traveled outside St. John's since I came to Newfoundland. So it was really a, an exciting moment for me to be here to worship with the B. Roberts Church and also to see the Pathfinder Club. Yes, yeah, so before I start my message, could we bow for a word of prayer? Daddy, we thank you so much for the opportunity to come before you on your holy Sabbath to worship and also to celebrate the baptism of Erica and also to celebrate the Pathfinder Club over here. We thank you for this opportunity. As we worship and as I speak, I want to invite the Holy Spirit. Of course, we know you are with us. Continue to be with us inspire our thoughts and our minds so that worship will be acceptable in your sight. This is a humble plea in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Right. Yeah, because I've been tasked to charge the pathfinders, I want to remind us all what pathfinders stand for or what we mean by pathfinders. And so I read it from the Quick Start Guide Pathfinder Club Director book. And they define Pathfinders as a worldwide organization of young people sponsored by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Though young people belonging to any church or none are welcome and encouraged to join the Pathfinder group. Yeah. And so one thing I was trying to understand is why should the church, especially the B. Roberts Church, have a Pathfinder club? Is it really important? And I'm going to go through some points here which will make us understand that we need a club. And I thank God that we have the club running in the church. And so the most important goal of the Papanda ministry is to lead young people into a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. And what do you say to that? Amen. And so the church really needs the club to be running. And I have four points listed out here, the importance that we get from joining and having the, the club running in the church. Pathfinders can help young people gain a better understanding of what God is calling them to do with their lives. And so they get to learn about witnessing and how to serve others. I guess that is the whole duty of man as Christians, right? And so if you are able to train the young people, the concept of witnessing and how to serve people, then we are done with what we have to do as Christians. And that is what the Pathfinder Club seeks to do. So I guess we need it in the church. And then the second point is that the Pathfinder Club provides many opportunities for youth to get involved and learn how they can play an integral role in the church family. And I think when, when Pastor Fred was here, he talked about training young people. We have a young person preaching in the church. Amen. I guess this training starts from the Pathfinder Club, the group. I remember growing up, very young boy, I could be invited to preach in the church. And I, we had all this training from the Pathfinder club. We go there, we go through the processes, the services. And so after we grew to a certain point, we could even preach, get the opportunity to preach in the church. So it's like training people to take over the leadership positions in the church. And then also Pathfinder activities help members develop good physical fitness habits that will keep them healthy for a lifetime. And I can cite example as the marching and the grilling. It's a physical exercise, Amen. and it keeps the young people moving, developing that fitness for their lifetime. And then find what we can talk about many points that the Pathfinder Ministry helps the youth. But then finally, 
the earnest and the investiture levels that we go through expose pathfinders to new talents and interests. There are many people now who are wondering what to do with their lives. They are not really clear on what they are interested in and what they can do best. But through the Pathfinder ministry, the honors, the investiture levels we take the children through, they get to appreciate and acknowledge what they are best doing. And they could develop that for their lifetime. And so it is important that the church consider having a Pathfinder club. And I thank God that the B. Robert Seventh-day Adventist Church have the club running. But to strengthen the club and make it more effective, the Pathfinder and the church have a part to play. And it is important that we can take active part of the work of ministry and invite people to experience the good news of Christ Jesus. I don't have much time, so I'll make it quick. I'll just take us through a couple of points that can help us have a successful club. And as I was thinking about what to speak to my people here today, my mind went to the story of the encounter of Jesus Christ and the woman at the well. It gives us a very good example to follow when it comes to witnessing and growing our relationship with Jesus Christ. You remember, I don't have time to read the whole story, but remember when Jesus had an encounter, when Jesus was speaking to the woman, the woman realized that somebody also needs to hear about this good news of Christ. And so he didn't, she didn't sit, but went to town to call people, inviting people to listen to the good news of Christ. And I guess if you want to have a successful and a strong Pathfinder club in the church, we need to train the young people to be witnessing. And so when they come to hear about the good news of Christ, when they have a relationship with Jesus Christ, it shouldn't end in the church. It should, they should invite others to also come to listen to Jesus Christ. Now, if, if you consider the story closely, when people had come to listen to Jesus Christ, they then testified that, of course, they have seen that Jesus speak the good news themselves. And they have come to believe not because, not only because they heard the woman invite them, but they have heard it from Jesus' own mouth. And so the lesson I could take from this is that when we invite people to come in after having an encounter with Jesus Christ, they themselves will testify that indeed the Lord is good. And they can strengthen their relationship with Jesus Christ. And another experience that I can find helpful and will help us have a successful club is the experience of Peter walking on the water to meet Jesus Christ. This is recorded in Matthew 15, 26 to 31. Now, as far as Peter kept his focus on Christ, he could walk on the waters. But when he got distracted by disturbances around the turbulence from the waters, Peter began to sink. And so as far as we train the young people to keep their focus on Jesus Christ, all the disturbances around will not be able to take them out of their faith. But if we do not train them very well, and of course that is what the Pathfinder Club seeks to do, is to train the young people to have a good relationship with Jesus Christ. And when we have done this, though they, as they are growing up, there are a lot of disturbances in the world, but they will keep on being in their faith because they have built a good relationship with Jesus Christ. And so in ending my, my, my charge, I would entreat that we try as a club, we try as much as possible to do away with finding fault with people. Working with people as a club or as a church is really difficult because people come with different beliefs, different mindsets, different characters, but we need to be accommodating and try as much as possible not to find fault or be critical on others. 
At times, we might think that criticizing others is not a big deal. It's just showing people where they are going wrong. But if we do it with the wrong heart and motives, it can lead them to harm. We might have a strong club running, but if we are not careful and we don't see God's guidance in directing people even when they are wrong, we might think that we are pointing their wrong things, but it will end up being more harm than good. And God might not be happy with us doing that. And we can cite an example in the Bible with the, with, from Numbers 12, where Miriam and, and uh, Aaron criticized Moses for marrying the Ethiopian woman. God was not happy with that. And so I want to charge all of us, even as we are young people, being in the club, helping each other, we are trying to build relationships. And of course, if, if we keep criticizing each other, people will run away from us. And I mean, if people are running away from you, you cannot be a good witness. Like you can't witness to them. And so let us keep ourselves together and work together. Let us be accommodating. And in all situations, what I think we should be doing is when you think or you are about to say something critical to somebody, you would want to have an internal check on your motive and whether the criticism is appropriate, justified, and if it's something God wants you to share with the person involved. It is very important that whenever you want to address any critical or sensitive issue in the club, you check in with Christ. What would Christ have done? And I believe if we do this, we would always keep ourselves together and build our relationship with Christ instead of destroying people or harming others. And so may the Lord bless us as we continue to be co-workers with Jesus Christ in his vineyard. May he continue to renew our relationship with Jesus Christ day by day. Amen. Thank you, Joseph. Appreciate those uh, words of advice, words of wisdom, words of direction. Uh, Pathfinder clubs are important. Our young people are important. And our church has been blessed with uh, a lot of young people. So uh, God is good. God will move upon the children's hearts and minds. And I know uh, the children everywhere, they do, uh, they not only need Christ, we do too, right? So uh, that's important. A warm welcome to each and every one who has come to our service today. A warm welcome to those who are watching online on our YouTube channel and Facebook stream. It is always good to come to the Lord's house. And today, we have a special occasion, a special worship service, where Erica McIntyre, which is uh, my daughter Erica, she has uh, committed her life to the Lord in publicly demonstrating this through the waters of baptism. So I know your church family is very happy, uh, Erica. I know your family is extremely happy. I know I'm busting at the seams, as they say, and uh, I'm very, very pleased that you have made this decision. Um, I know that uh, there's a lot of announcements in your bulletin. I think the pastor may mention that a little later, or not, okay. But there are some announcements in your bulletin. Uh, I just encourage you to read that at your in your leisure. Do not forget, uh, don't leave the sanctuary right away because there's a lot of food down there that needs to be consumed, okay? And uh, we need a lot of people to, to fellowship together to have that wonderful time together, okay? I'm grateful for my family who has come, and I'm going to name them off uh, one by one. Obviously, it's uh, Selena, Erica, Jenna, and Levi. And we got Tiana back there, and... Uh, we got uh, Brandon, and we got my girlfriend that's sitting back there. What's her name? Pearl. Pearl. I don't mean to embarrass you, Pearl, but we're grateful that you're all here. Amen. Let's uh, stand, shall we, for our opening hymn. Our opening hymn is um, 
Actually, yes, our opening hymn is 318, Whiter Than Snow. sounded wonderful. Please be seated. Our offering today is for religious liberty. Now I can uh, explain to you a little bit about what religious liberty actually is, a religious liberty offering. Um, Obviously in the world today there are freedoms being taken away where you don't have religious freedom, you don't have the opportunity to come here like we do and uh, share in God's word or or worship. There are places that people are being persecuted. There are places where you can't even have a Bible. There are places where you are uh, basically told what to do, how to worship, and when. So religious liberty offering goes towards um, a particular uh, endeavor, a particular ministry in our church where All the offerings come in that's labeled for religious liberty in the world, come together, as it were. And then it's distributed to thought leaders around the world in in the magazine that we have called Religious Liberty. And it's distributed to uh, lawyers, to politicians, to doctors, to these type of professionals. And so your offering today will go to that worthy cause because let me remind everyone here, there will come a time when we won't have religious freedom. It will be taken away from us. So... That's important. So I asked, uh, I believe it's uh, Aaron and Svetlana who will be taking up the offering today. And uh, I ask you to come forward to collect the Lord's tithes and offering. Thank you, Svetlana. I really appreciate it.
Father in heaven, Lord, we ask that you will bless the offerings that have been collected. May it go towards their intended purpose. May you multiply them and may you may these offerings and funds be uh, reach the precious the precious multitudes with the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture reading is brought to us by Eden Chafe. Eden. Today's scripture reading is found in Psalms 109, chapter 119, verses 103 to 105. As sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Thank you, Eden. Eden is a regular reader of the Bible up front here. And uh, pretty soon we won't need this special thing that you stand on because you're getting so big. Anyway. Special music today is brought to us by Amy and friends. I'm just going to leave it at that. Amy. Well, today you all get to be our friends because we're going to sing the chorus together, and it's the Old Rugged Cross, and it's hymn number 159, if you'd like to turn there in your hymnals.
Thank you for singing with us. And for those of you who don't know, this is Erica's favorite song, so she requested this hymn today. Pardon? And abide with me. So our prayer is that Erica will always cling to that old rugged cross, and the Lord will be faithful to her. So we were at home, and we were discussing the opening hymn, and... Uh, Erica first said, abide with me, and uh, then, then the old rug cross came up, and I said, well, I'm not going to pick the opening hymn for you, but I will give you a suggestion. Abide with me is many times played at a funeral, so uh, maybe old rug cross. <laughs> but abide with me is not just for funerals, we understand that. Actually, all the music that you hear today is picked up by Erica, all the songs in between that you're going to hear and things like that, and one thing that uh, she loved um, growing up was hymns and uh, sitting at home opening up the hymnal and, and watching and listening and uh, singing the hymns and uh, we'll get more into that later though our message today is brought to you by my daughter Selena and uh, pray for Selena because I know she's a little nervous but that's okay it's good to be nervous that way the Lord's in control amen and uh, she has uh, brought together a really good message, and uh, I'm thankful for her willingness to do so, and I'm thankful that uh, she gave it a great deal of thought, and you'll see that as uh, she presents. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath, or I think it's still the morning. <laughs> so, um, the first person I think who came up with the idea to have, for me to have the sermon was Pastor Fred, so thank you for the idea. And then Dad encouraged me to pursue the idea. So, and when he first asked me, I was like super nervous. Like, I was like, do I really want to get up in front of a whole pile of people to do a sermon? <laughs> and then I, I thought about it, I was like, Yes, yes, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm not going to turn down a great opportunity like this, especially since it's my sister's baptism. And it's like perfect, perfect timing all around. But, and whenever someone came up and asked me for the week, how are you feeling, Selena, about doing the sermon? I was like, well, I am nervous, but also excited for this opportunity. So let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for blessing this Sabbath day with new opportunities and horizons. I pray that you'll be with me as I present the sermon and Erica as she has decided to go through the waters of baptism. Thank you for bringing everyone out safely, and I pray that you'll be that everyone here will be truly blessed by the service. We pray everything in your name. Amen. Amen. So when I was putting together a sermon, I was thinking of two focuses. Uh, well, actually, I was thinking of one focus, but then I was like, I'm an overthinker, so I was going to do. I decided to do two focuses. One is I want to help everyone to get to know Erica a little bit more about her faith and her personal jo journey up to this point. And number two, the personal meaning of baptism. And there's definitely more than one, as I've studied. Erica's walk with God, of course, started as a young kid. She absolutely loved to sing songs, like Dad mentioned, and hymns. My first memory of truly seeing Erica's walk with God was when we lived in CBS. And we lived to, in CBS, I think, up to, we were five years old, I think. Yes. And our poppy, he bought us, uh, we call him Poppy Canes. His name is Roger Canes. Bought us a toy microphone from the dollar store. And, of course, you know, that night we had to put off a concert for our family, of course, of all the hymns we learned in Sabbath school. And that was a lot of fun. But 
Erica, she was able to learn and memorize songs way faster than me. And she still is able to learn songs and memorize memory verses way faster than me. And she won the spotlight on that one. From that, I could see that Erica was going to be an amazing disciple and witness for Jesus and the church. So that is the first meaning of baptism on my list and might be on your list. Giving your life to be a witness and disciple for Jesus and the church. So turn with me in your Bibles to Matthew 28, verse uh, uh, 19 to 20. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So with baptism, God has chosen you to be a part of his ministry. It's not just to accept Jesus as your personal savior, which is a huge part of baptism. But it's also accept the ministry that he is bestowing on you. As a Christian soldier, going out to teach others about Jesus, getting roles as a baptized member in the church, helping the sick, being a part of the family of God. And always remember, God is with you all the time. Being a good Christian soldier entails that you need to have a good knowledge of the Bible and be willing to study it often. All of us girls have always admired our mom and dad's knowledge of the Bible, which came from studying, of course. When mom was homeschooling us, she always made sure to implement the Bible into our curriculum, whether it was going over the weekly Sabbath school lesson, downloading and printing off a Bible study unit, which mom got a lot of us those. One of them was the fruit of the spirit. Bible doctrines, which we are still studying in Abeka Academy, how to love your brothers and sisters in Christ, and your siblings, of course, how to, ha <laughs> how to have a close relationship with God, and she even got us an Ellen White study about her life, and it talked about the different books she wrote as well. Mom taught us the books of the Bible through a song which also taught the kids of this church as well. Dad taught us how to properly mark our Bibles. I had a lot of fun with that one. Erica and Jen had a little bit of a hard time with that one, but I had a lot of fun. How to speak the truth to bring people in and not to turn them off or push them away. In Proverbs 2, verse 10, you can read along with me if you like. It's very short. When wisdom entereth into thine heart and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, and if you continue to verse 12, it says, to deliver thee from the way of the evil man, from the man that speaketh froward things. So getting baptized, of course, doesn't mean that you need to know everything of the Bible, because we'll never know everything of the Bible. It's the gateway to getting to know more about the Bible and God. Our dinner table talks are usually about a lot of things, but it always comes to talk about religion or the Bible or both. And when we get into those conversations, usually it'll be at least three hours. We're talking hardcore, looking up the Bible, arguing who's right, all that. <laughs> on Sabbath in the winter months, I make sure to take our dog Polar on a walk beforehand and then cook supper because I know, look, the sun's setting early. We're going to be talking about the Bible. Okay, well, I better be prepared beforehand. Erica especially loves these conversations because she gets to implement and talk about her knowledge of the Bible. And that's always the favorite part for all of us in these conversations, getting to talk about our knowledge of the Bible and hearing others' knowledge of the Bible. So if you come over to our house or if we come over to your house, we're probably going to get into a conversation about the Bible sooner or later. Those of you who don't know me might not know that I'm not baptized. And when I was asked to do the sermon, I, and I was asking myself a lot of questions, but one of them was, why am I going up and giving a sermon about baptism? And, of course, I asked my dad this question, and he said that it's not about if you are or are not baptized. It's about giving your knowledge on baptism from a personal standpoint so others can be inspired to see your viewpoint on it as an unbaptized member. I am truly inspired by my sister Erica's decision. The first time Erica told me that she was interested in getting baptized was last winter when she told me, and it was very straight up, Selena, 
when I turn 16, I'm going to get baptized. And I was like, why 16? And she said, and she said, because I feel the Lord moving in through my life, guiding me to make this decision as becoming 16 years old already marks a major milestone in my life. When you accept God's guidance, he will guide you to do amazing things. And one of them is getting baptized. One time when dad and I, and I'm, there's got a lot of mentions of dad and mom here because we do a lot of talking. <laughs> but one time when dad and I were talking about baptism, I asked him, why does baptism have to be so public? And this is literally what I said to dad. Look, dad, when I get baptized, it's going to be just like eloping. I'll pick the witnesses, and that will be that. No biggie. That is literally how I thought, because I'm more of a private person, and I, I am an extrovert, but I'm like Dad, a mix of an extrovert and an introvert. But Dad told me that baptism, baptism is supposed to be public, because if you are not comfortable with making it known that you are accepting Jesus as your Savior, then how are you going to be comfortable with being a witness for him? I had to think about it, and it was revealed to me that what Dad said is true. Baptism isn't just about people showing up and watching a person get accept Jesus or go through the waters of baptism. It's about setting an example for those who haven't made a decision to be baptized and being a light to those who are having a struggle in their walk with God. Jesus led in the way in baptism, in water baptism. Baptism was the beginning of his ministry, and it's the beginning of the person getting baptized ministry as well. Whatever they decide to do with their ministry, the first step is baptism. In 1 Peter 3, verse 21, it says, There is also an antitype which now saves us. Baptism, not the removal of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And as you, as you read in, in the bulletins, the sermon title is A New Door Opens. And literally, I'm a nighttime thinker, so that came to me in the nighttime, and I typed it up on my phone. God opens many doors, even when you are not baptized. From the age of eight and up, Erica has been doing scripture reading, leading out in morning prayer, helping dad with song service, singing with Sunshine Band in the elderly home, doing door-to-door -door ministries when it was planned by the church or the Pathfinder group. Erica has a kind heart, especially for the elderly. When the church would go to the elderly homes and sing songs before COVID hit, Erica would make sure all the elderly were welcomed and even made friends with a few that she would visit personally. One time when we were cluing up at one of the elderly homes, Erica noticed an elderly lady who was going to visit her granddaughter. So she went over to talk to her and found out that this lady didn't have a present for her granddaughter's birthday. So Erica gave the elderly lady one of her new dolls that she bought with her birthday money and gave it to her so she could give it to her granddaughter for her birthday without even thinking about it. Baptism is the next door God is opening in your walk with him. In 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9, it says, For a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. In this verse, the Apostle Paul is implying that it is God who ultimately makes the work effectual. He is the one opening a great effectual door of ministry. Mom always said, when Erica had her mind set on something, there is no stopping her. God knows this too. He knows that if he impressed on her heart to get baptized, she would go through that door that he is opening for her. These are a few words to Erica from mom before she passed away that I'm going to read. And th these, these words will also be in the video that will be shown after, my, after this sermon. Erica has been a blessing to watch grow up and see what kind of woman she is. She has so much to offer. I love the way she thinks. Her wonderful mind is refreshing. And the way that she loves people, especially the elderly, and she thrives on it and wants to make the world a better place. These are all signs of maturity. God loves you, Erica, more than words can say. We as parents have made sure that God and his word is ingrained in your lives. The person you see today are because of it. My counsel to Erica is love. Give love because when Erica gives love, she has loved herself and she's got a lot of love to give. And when people see the real her, they can appreciate it.
I love you, Erica. I always will love you. And I get sad to think I won't see everything that will happen. But I'm very confident that whatever plans do come, you will conquer them. Mom was a huge part of our upbringing in the church and spiritually. She was always thinking of us. Even when she was passing away, she was always thinking of us. And she made audio recordings with the help of Dad for all of us before she passed away and got too sick and piled it. Baptism is the, the next door God opens for us in our walk with him. And then many doors after. In our walk with God, there are going to be hard times. But it's how we depend on him is what we will get, it is what will get us through it. Like our mom's passing. How did we get through that? We leaned on God for strength. And he gave it to us through the help of our family, church family, and friends. God gave us the courage to continue our ministry and walk with him. Sometimes we may feel that the door God is opening and holding open for us isn't one we want to walk through. But when we trust in him and go through that door, we feel so much better spiritually and mentally. We get that feeling of purpose and belonging. And it's only through him where we can find that and lean on it. Won't you trust him today? Please continue to pray for Erica as a new chapter in her spiritual journey has opened. There will be trials and triumphs, that, but God will bring her through them all. Let us, let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for opening doors for us that we may find hard to open ourselves and go through. We thank you for being with Erica as she has decided to follow you and make that only commitment can, that can only be done through the waters of baptism. Continue to give us strength through our journey with you. And thank you for this blessed Sabbath day. In your name, amen. So now Jenna is going to come up and she has a speech that she would like to present to the congregation and Erica. Uh, so I don't want to make this speech about me, and it isn't about me, it's about Erica, and by the way, congratulations, you're, you will soon be a member of the church when you are in the water. So, last week, um... As we were driving home, I was sitting in the back with Erica uh, because uh, our car was stuffed with groceries, and um, and me and Erica started talking, you know, um, we started talking, uh, I told her uh, about my relationship with God right now. Uh, she told me that she was praying for me and when that my faith would be restored, you know? Uh, she, she told me that she was worried about me and when she said she was praying for me, it, you know, really kind of hit me in a good way, not a bad way. Um, she said to me, you inspired me you had such good faith. This is sort of what she said. It's not exactly what she said, but, yeah. And I couldn't get it off my mind for the past week. I guess what I'm trying to say is um, she has inspired me to try, like, try really hard to repair my faith in God. Like how I inspired Erica to have strong faith in God. Um, I'm truly proud of her, and I thought either me or Selena would be the first ones that would be in the water, but we apparently it was Erica, and she was the least expected person. Uh, I just wanted to say something to you, Erica. Um, I'm trying, and thank you for praying for me. Uh, May God be with you as you walk this life to the fullest, as you make people smile along the way, 
even when all seems to be dark. May he bless you with peace of mind. May he give your heart joy. May he bless your soul with everlasting love. And may you never grow tired or weary. May he grant you wisdom. He grant you courage. And may you never regret the decisions you've made in your life and journey through this life. God bless you. I, but before I end, um, I found this Bible verse that really matches the baptism. Uh, it will, it's found in the fir- first Corinthians twelve thirteen. 13. Uh, the version, um, I was reading is the King James version. Uh, so it, it says, for by one spirit, we all we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. God bless you. Thank you, Jenna. That was a wonderful speech. You brought a few people to tears. But that's, that's the good kind of speeches. That's what speeches are supposed to do. Some speeches. <laughs> so now the video is going to be played. Uh, so this video, what well, I made for Erica, well, all of us, but for Erica, um, I think, yes, a few months ago in November, because November 16 is when Mom passed away. So, and then November 16, 2022, marked the, like, one year since Mom passed away. And I put together a video of, because, of course, she made audio recordings for all of us. So I put together a video with all the audio recordings on each one. But since this day is about Erica, I cut it out and I, I kept only the one for Erica. So we're going to watch Erica's one. And what Mom says is really true, and I hope you're all inspired by it. And, Dad, would you like to come up and say a few words? Or, Okay. And then the video be, will be played after that. Um, so I'm going to put a request into the board that from now on there's tissues up on this platform <laughs> because I can't stand wiping tears <laughs> off with my hands. So, um, Dad, this video, I think some of you have seen this video maybe on Facebook because Selena posted it earlier, but it's a, this is the sh- shortened version. Um, I just want to say, too, that uh, the reason why you hear my voice, thank you, the reason why you hear my voice is because um, Stephanie was very sick at the time. She was in palliative care, and so uh, she wanted to do some recordings for all the, all the kids. <coughs> And um, so I was there sort of as an interviewer, um, so that could prompt her to, to share what she needed to share. Okay. Uh, so when Erica started uh, getting a little bit older, and she showed forth uh, so much uh, excitement, didn't she? Yeah, so then she uh, started showing for so much uh, exuberance and joy, right? It's an understatement. Yeah. Erica has been a blessing to watch grow up and to see what kind of woman she is. She has so much to offer. What does she say? Love the way she thinks. She got such a wonderful mind, doesn't she? Oh, it's refreshing. Mm-hmm. And the way she loves people. Especially the elderly. Yeah, especially mm-hmm. the elderly. And she she thrives on it. Mm-hmm. She really, really do and she just wants to make the world a better place, I think. It's important, and these are all signs of maturity. What would you like to say to Erica now in her in these years, these teenage years? Do you have anything to say about her there? Just that I hope she really pushes herself. Yeah. I mean, we will love her no matter what she does in life, but to get the things that she wants. She has to work for them. 
I know she can work for him. I know she can do it. Just a matter of digging in your heels and, and really finding your way in the midst here. For the bulk of it, whoever comes and meets Erica will be changed forever. Love you, Erica. I always will love you. And I get sad to think I won't see everything that'll happen. But I'm very confident that whatever plans come, you'll conquer them. Selena, you're going to stop it. <laughs> Just going to have to stop it, girl. But very appreciative. Very appreciative. And uh, as you can tell, you know, Stephanie was a huge part of um, Carol's and Levi's upbringing, huge part. And uh, Pastor Fred said to me, uh, a couple of days ago, he said, I hope I'm not saying anything out of turn, but I think uh, it'd be good to have a mention, you know, something to get put together for Stephanie because she was such an integral part of their uh, upbringing. And uh, I said, oh, yes, <laughs> that's uh, definitely, that is the case. So, Erica, all I can say is, you know, you know from the video, you know from the past, you know from your interaction with your mom that she loved you beyond any comparison. So and she'd be happy today if she could witness you making this decision. Um, many, many, many discussions about uh, making that decision for Jesus through the waters of baptism. But she'd be so proud of you. She really would. And I'm proud of you too. And our whole family is. Well, Erica, I'm going, I know this is probably not a good time now because uh, of what we just watched, but uh, I'm going to ask you to come forward to me. Just be up here with me, okay? Come over here. Come up where the tissues are. So, as her dad, I'm supposed to, uh, you know, give an introduction to Erica. Um, I don't know if I need to anymore because that video sort of basically did the introduction. Um, Erica, as Selena said and as the video said, as her mom said, Erica has a huge heart. And uh, she's a lot like her mom because her mom was very direct and uh, forthcoming. Um, she speaks it as she sees it. and. Uh, and let's God uh, do the interpretation for everyone else. All right, man. And uh, but she's uh, she's long uh, loved um, spiritual things. She she loves the Bible. I remember when she first got her Bible, uh, she would say, "I'm going to read the entire Bible from cover to cover." And this was at an early age. This was uh, I think in how old were you? Eight, eight years old. And so she did uh, open up the Bible, and she read it. She didn't read it at the end of it, because as most of us, when we start getting to the hard stuff, it's pretty, uh, it's hard reading, right? But she read a good portion of it, and she read a good portion of uh, some of Ellen White's writings too, didn't you? 
but she enjoys reading. She's her the brain she has for knowledge and spiritual knowledge is amazing. And uh, I'm not just saying as her dad, I'm, I'm proud as a proud dad, but it's the truth. And I know she loves the Lord with all of her heart. And uh, we had this discussion the other day that, you know, um, is it going to be easy once you make this decision, once you walk through the waters? And we had this discussion this morning in Sabbath school. No, it's not going to be easy. Um, it hasn't been easy for anyone who has made that decision. I can guarantee you, if I were to poll any particular person here who has made that commitment, has it been uh, an easy road? Absolutely not. Most people would say, no, it's been a tough road. There's been ups and downs. There's been struggles. But the best thing about the struggles is that when you go through the struggle and you look back, you see how God moved. Amen. You see how God was close. You see how God uh, answers the prayer, even though it may not be the way that we expect it. Right? So, Erica, we're all proud of you here. Um, this church here knows you very well because you've been in this church for 12 years now. Right? So, 16 now. So, actually, you came to church when you were four. So, and you know, I remember the day we walked into this church. It was like a bomb went off because. <laughs> I'm just being honest. We came in and it was just came in with four kids were running around everywhere. And, uh, it was quite an experience, wasn't it, church? But it's been a blessing. Amen. So at this time, I'm going to ask Pastor Fred to come forward and he's going to go over the baptismal vows with you, okay? All right. I think you'll be able to hear me. Is that all right? You know, Erica, um, <laughs> your mom talked about this day a lot, a lot of times. <clears throat> and uh, I spent a lot of time with your mother talking about uh, you guys and growing up spiritually. And there were some promises that were made. To, re <clears throat> to raise you guys in cooperation with this church in the fear of the Lord. I'm so happy to see that the church has rallied behind you guys, Amen. behind us, to make this decision that you've made this decision. So, listening to your mom was very emotional. So these things that I know you believe are not merely for you to agree to, because I know if you agree to them, but it's for them to see what we believe, why we believe, and to honor God. Amen. So I'll just ask that you raise your hand, because it's very difficult to speak right now like this uh, after I read these, these out. <coughs> I believe there is one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a unity of three co-eternal persons. I accept the death of Jesus Christ on Calvary as the atoning sacrifice for my sins and believe that through faith in his shed blood I am saved from the penalty of sin. <laughs> I have renounced the world and its sinful ways and have accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, believing that God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven my sins and given me a new heart. Amen. I accept by faith the righteousness of Christ, my intercessor in the heavenly sanctuary, and accept 
His promise, his promise of transforming grace and power to live a loving, Christ-centered life in my home and before the whole world. Mm. I believe that the Bible is God's inspired word, the only rule of faith and practice for the Christian. I covenant to spend time regularly in prayer and in Bible study. Mm. I accept the Ten Commandments as a transcript of the character of God and a revelation of his will. It is my purpose by the power of the indwelling Christ to keep his law, which includes the fourth commandment, in the observance of the seventh day of the week as the Sabbath of the Lord, a memorial to the creation of the earth. I look forward to the soon coming of Jesus and the blessed hope when this mortal shall put on immortality. As I prepare to meet the Lord, I will witness to his loving salvation and by life and word, help others to be ready for his glorious appearing. I accept the biblical teaching of the spiritual gifts and believe that the gift of prophecy is one of the identifying marks of the remnant church in Revelation. I believe in church organization. It is my purpose to support the church by my tithes, in offerings and by my personal effort and influence. I believe that my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and will honor God by caring for it, avoiding the use of that which is harmful, abstaining from all unclean foods, the use, manufacture, sale of alcohol, beverages, tobacco and any of its forms, for human consumption and the misuse and trafficking of narcotics and other such drugs. I know and understand the fundamental Bible principles as taught by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I purpose by the grace of God to fulfill His will by ordering my life in harmony with these principles. I accept the New Testament teaching of baptism by immersion and desire to so be baptized as a public expression of my faith in Christ and his forgiveness of my sins. I accept and believe that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is the remnant church of the Bible in prophecy and that people of every nation, race, and language are all invited to accept and accepted into its fellowship, and I desire to be a member of the local congregation of this remnant church. Mm -hmm. Erica, I believe in all seriousness that when you told me directly uh, a couple weeks ago it must have been Pastor Fred I'm getting baptized when you said it like that I knew for sure in your heart that you knew exactly what you're doing and so I want to ask the congregation at this moment uh, those who are uh, members of this congregation that uh, we will Accept Erica Mona McIntyre into the Bay Roberts Seventh day Adventist Church as a full fledged Seventh day Adventist Christian on, in lieu of her baptism by raising hands. Amen. 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 So I have nothing left to do, <laughs> nothing left to say. Praise the Lord. And uh, I just want to say that when Pastor Fred came up and he was uh, emotional as you've seen him, um, Pastor Fred and uh, Stephanie had a really good uh, relationship in the sense that, um, in the sense that they had a lot of conversations, and uh, Stephanie would be bestowing uh, her wisdom upon Pastor Fred, and Pastor Fred bestowing his wisdom on Stephanie. Uh, but it was the relationship was very uh, uh, it was a blessing and that's I think that's why you see Pastor Freddie emotional part of it and uh, I want to also say uh, we're going to go into the baptism part of it now and uh, I know the service is a longer service um, 
But I don't want to leave everyone, when everyone sees the emotion coming out, it's a, it's a hardcore depth emotion because there's a lot there. There's a lot of history, there's a lot of past, there's a lot of tragedy. But you know something today? There's so much joy. There is so much joy. Uh, you know, heaven is rejoicing right now. Even though there's tears, even though there's heartache, heaven and God himself, Jesus himself, is, re is rejoicing right now that we are here to witness this wonderful decision that Erica is making. So I want to leave that where it is. Uh, this is a joyful time. I'm going to ask um, Luis to come forward, and he's going to share some songs that Erica picked out as we prepare for the baptism. There's a few songs, and then we'll come into the baptism time. Such, such an amazing moment to be able to witness, such an amazing, um, the last time I was uh, at a baptism was about two or three weeks ago, and every time it just touches my heart, just touches my heart to know that there is such an, that as a young person, we can make a decision to give God our heart and our life. Let's start singing, uh, Jesus is coming again, 2.13. Again, this is a song that we want to belt out because Jesus is coming again. Lift up the trumpets and loud let it ring. Jesus is coming again. Cheer up, ye pilgrims, be joyful and sing. Jesus is coming again. Coming again, coming again, Jesus is coming again. Echo in your top, proclaim it you plain, Jesus is coming again. Coming in glory, the Lamb that was slain, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming again. Tempest of old wind, the anthem prolong. Jesus is coming again. Coming again, coming again. Jesus is coming again. Nations are angry. is coming again. Knowledge increasing, men run to and fro. Jesus is coming again. Coming again, coming again. Jesus is coming again. How many of you are so glad that Jesus is coming again? Now we're going to sing 524, Tea So Sweet, to trust in Jesus. Tea so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know, thus says the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him o'er and o'er, Jesus, Jesus, Precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust. 
trust him more. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus. Yes, to trust his cleansing blood. Just in simple faith to purchase. Nail the healing cleansing blood. Jesus, Jesus, how. self to see just from Jesus simple taking life and rest and joy and peace Jesus, Jesus how I trust him, how I love him more and more Jesus, Jesus precious Jesus Oh, for great to trust him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust thee, precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that thou art with me, will be with me till the grave. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him here we are getting ready and uh, I want to say something here as well um, some may be asking why uh, the past I'm the elder of, of this church some may be asking Erica says head elder <laughs> uh, some may say why the pastor's not doing it Erica had requested her dad baptize her and uh, and I appreciate that I really do and I know Pastor Fred appreciates it too and uh, so when I asked Pastor Ken at the mission office, he gave his blessing as well. I think uh, everything that is said and done up to this point as we stand here in the baptismal tank, um, I believe with my whole heart that there's always this particular type of service is a blessing to not only Erica and to me and to our family, it's a blessing to the church those who are watching online and it gets it tends for us to re-examine ourselves of where we are in our walk with the Lord uh, it gets us to reflect upon how uh, where when, when we made this decision years ago some have made decisions some have not but those who have who did made decisions years ago and uh, to reflect upon our life from that point 
up until this point. And uh, I believe the Holy Spirit moves upon each and every one of us during these services. Because, you know, Jesus set the example. He walked through the waters of baptism. And that's exactly what he did. He walked through the waters of baptism. And uh, that there, in and of itself, is an example for us. Amen. And when we make that decision, he'll never leave nor forsake us, ever. Um, what we choose from day to day, that's another thing. Is uh, Albert there right now? Albert, I'm going to get you to come forward. And uh, in the room there, on the left there, can you get me the white towel that's hanging, that's sitting there on the, on the thing? I forgot the white towel. Huh? And Erica said that she'd like to say a few words right now as well. Thank you, Erica. Hey, Erica. Here we go. Um, sorry about the whole emotional show. <laughs> uh, it's just that um, I, when Mom first died, I wasn't really uh, I was, I was sad and stuff, but it was more like of a shocker more than anything else. So I didn't cry very much. But afterwards, every time I hear Mom's voice or hear people talking about her, I start bawling. You know, mom called mom called sobbing and all that, right? But anyway, what like what inspired me to get baptized? At first, like at first, like I was just worried about oh, am I being a fence sitter? And then I was like, that's what mom called it, right? And mom, and then I was like, but then I was realized that you don't have to be perfect to be um, baptized. You just have to be you just have to be ready. And uh, the reason why I wanted to be baptized at 16, I don't know the real reason. I, I have the most silliest of reasons. I'm not going to say them all since it's a little embarrassing. But my main reason is because I want to be close to God and stuff. And um, I want to just have a whole new level of a relationship with him. Amen. And um, what inspired me to get baptized was Jenna, Jenna and God right now, their relationship's a little strained. So pray for her. But but, but before but before Jenna and God's relationship was really strong there like uh, that. And then that, and I, and I found that amazing, right? And then also, no, Dad inspired me too. But the most prominent figure would be my mother, and because uh, she she had the most, she had the most, even though she was very blunt, and sometimes people sometimes people got their feelings hurt now and then. Um, mom, Mom got her point across, and she's like, "I apologize if I'm hurt your feelings." She's like, "But it's the truth, the blunt truth, and the blunt truth is what's going to get you there." And um, not sugarcoating, and and, and so. I, I want to get baptized because I want that's his thing because I want to be I want mom to be here, but mom can't be here because she's dead, and uh, that hurts. But I'm just and I'm happy and I was worried and mom didn't want dad to be alone so dad so now Pearl and her family's here it's, here it's, it's nice. Amen. You can tell dad's glowing right now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you see him blushing? That's the heat from the this whole thing. I, I think Mom and Pearl would have got along a, a lot. They're not the same person, and they're not going to be the same person. But they're but they both are but they both have the same qualities. They both say things as they are, and that's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing, and that's what I like about both of them. And um, I know Dad and Pearl will be happy together. I know they will. Mom wanted Dad to have someone else because Mom said she better not when she when he goes when they meet up in heaven. She said she better not see him alone. <laughs> she, said, she said she's going to be really mad. She says, I don't want you, you, you are a horrible bachelor. <laughs> and Selena can agree. <laughs> so anyway, mom is what inspired me. And well, I talk about mom a lot with her funny moments, but mom had very, very most important moments. But a lot of people inspire me, and I can't name them all, like Miss Lydia, Myrtle, all kinds of people. And, but mom inspired me the most. But I know uh, the main reason why I'm getting back is because of God, because of all the people. I'm getting back right there, and I thank you for coming, those who could make it. And those who are watching online, thank you that you could tune in and watch. Amen. So, may God bless. Amen. Eric, would you like to have a, a word of prayer before we stop there? Sure. Dear Jesus, I pray, Lord, that you'll beat me as I go, that you'll be, be with me as I go on this whole new level with you as I get baptized. Lord, I know it's not just about being, being as people call it, dunked in water. It's about being on a whole new level with you. I, although all those small little details that I'm not saying are, are there, the main detail, Lord, is because I want to be with you and I love you. I've always loved you. 
I tried to blame you over Mom's spit death, but I never could because I knew it wasn't your fault. It was Satan's fault because he caused all of this. And I know Mom would Mom won't want me to do that. So Lord, I don't blame you. And I I, I pray you'll forgive me for even having having the thought of attempting to blame you. But Lord, I love you, Lord, and I want to be with you forever. And I'm not perfect. I do all kinds of things that are not perfect, Lord, but I do want to be with you, Lord, and I love you. And I, and I pray you be with the congregation, me and the ones watching online, and my dad. And I pray you be with this holy Sabbath day, and I love you. In your name, amen. 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 Yeah, me are going with dad and me went over the positions and I almost didn't get it right. I'm afraid I might get my butt and feet might stick out. Because <laughs> I can't, I can't. She said, she said it before me. Because I can't, because I can't sink. I, I only float. <laughs> All right. You ready? Yes. Okay. Erica? Yes. Jesus loves you. I know. He set the example for you. I know. And he knows of your decision today and he's very, very pleased. I'm pleased too. And I'm very happy too. I'm happy too. And the congregation is extremely happy as well. I can tell. And the holy angels are happy too. I, I wish I could hear them. Yeah. So, this is the opportunity now where we are going to put into action your commitment to follow Jesus all the way in the waters of baptism. So, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I now baptize you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And your feet didn't rise up. No, they didn't. <laughs> I'm going to get the ladies to come forward, and uh, I don't know if they'll sing a few more songs, and then we'll get ready. All right, let's start with song 212. Song 12, 212, tis almost time for the Lord to come. What a wonderful experience, and what a wonderful song that we're going to sing. It's almost time for the Lord to come, I hear the people say. The stars of heaven are growing dim, it must be the breaking of the day. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. The day is almost gone, the day is coming on. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. The signs foretold of the sins and moon in earth and the sea and sky. A loud proclaim to all mankind the coming of the maker of the day. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. The night is almost gone, the day is coming on. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. It must be time for the waiting church to cast her pride away. With curtain loins and a burning lamp to look for the breaking of the day. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. The night is almost gone, the day is coming on. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. Oh, 
sing song 108, Amazing Grace. presence of our God. Let us sing through a song 309, I Surrender All. surrender all. 
all to Jesus I surrender humbly at his feet I bow worldly pleasures all forsaken take me Jesus take me Surrender all to God. Let's stand and sing the last anthem. All to Jesus I surrender. Now I feel the sacred flame. Oh, the joy of full salvation. Glory, glory to What we witnessed today was a symbolic death where the old life, the old sins, the old habits, the pain, the suffering, whatever it was that was holding you back was given to the, given to the Lord, buried in the waters of baptism symbolically so you can, she can walk fully in faith, in joy, in freedom, as a new person, a new creation. I think of the story of Jesus and John the Baptist at the Jordan River. And Jesus is coming down out of the crowd. You may have seen in the movie once or twice as he comes down and, and John's there in the river baptizing people and he looks at him and he says to him, Lord, aren't you supposed to be baptizing me? <laughs> and in all reality, that's true. Christ does. But he said, no, permit it to be so to fulfill all righteousness. If Christ didn't go first, where would our faith be grounded in? Where would our hope be grounded in? If he didn't raise from the dead first, why would we even be here? You see, friends, I want to live for forever. I want to live forever in perfect harmony with all my brothers and sisters, with all my friends and family, with all my everybody around in perfect harmony. That's not saying you're, you're perfect and you don't have it all together. It's saying he's perfect and he can help me through it. And I'm committed to the relationship of being a better person. And that's what baptism is all about. And today, 
it wouldn't be a baptism without an appeal for baptism. There may be someone here today who's never gone through the water again. There may be someone who's still wondering if this is the right place for them, if this is the right decision for them. Friends, what you've witnessed today is inspiring. A young person deciding full, wholeheartedly, no turning back, I'm giving my life to God. If that's your desire, if that's something that you have been contemplating or that you, for the first time, recognize what it is all about, myself, Elder McIntyre here, Pastor Corkum, we're here to talk with you, to walk with you, to take you through the steps. I believe that there are people here ready today. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for blessing us for, with this example that you gave us of Jesus' death and resurrection, his burial of his life in the baptism waters. Not that he ever committed anything wrong, but that he wanted to show us how to live. We thank you so much for his gift of eternal life, which is for free. So long as we are with him, we will rise from the dead just like he did. Lord, be with each one who's contemplating that decision today. Make it on their heart a burning desire to follow you, to live a new life, to accept you in a new way. Lord, thank you so much for the McIntyre family, for Erica, and for, for all of them, Lord. Bless them. Bless us in Jesus' name. Please be seated. So right now we're going to, Pastor Ken is coming forward. I'm going to ask uh, Erica if you can come forward as well. Francis? Francis as well. Okay. Erica, we're very, very happy today and the Lord's very happy as well. You have touched our lives and, and given us all an opportunity to make our recommitment to the Lord. We have something a little special for you from the church family. Uh, in there you will find uh, a nice, beautiful series to review your Bible studies. You'll also find something in there, how to uh, storytelling, and you'll be able to share that with uh, the young people when you tell stories. And uh, there's also a book there on the parables of Jesus. And I think that you'll enjoy that. Thank you. Yeah. And it's just a delight to be able to uh, be here in this fellowship. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to involve the congregation just a little bit. Because you look over the, uh, the con fellowship here today. There are people that have been walking with the Lord for many, many years. And there's some Bible promises. And there's some maybe songs. There may be some testimony that they, we'd like to invite them to share back with you to encourage you in your walk. And I'm going to start off while they think about it because I have a text that's been meaningful to me and I'm going to share it with you and I'm going to ask others to share back with you a promised text that's been encouraging to them or a song maybe they've enjoyed or a testimony that they want to pass on to you as you continue your new walk with the Lord. May I add something? Go ahead. Thank you for everything, everyone. Thank you very much. The text that I'd like to share with you that's been a real encouragement to me is found in the book of Jude. And you come over to verse 24, and it says this, Now unto him, talking about Jesus, he is able, who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless. And I like this verse because it takes, off, it, takes it off my shoulders and puts it in Jesus' court. He is able to present me faultless. And so that's his responsibility. Mine is to listen to his voice, to follow his leading, to study his word, and allow him to be the one responsible. He knows what he's desiring for me to arrive at, where he wants me to be, so that I'm ready for his coming. And it says he takes responsibility to also keep me from falling. I like that a lot because it shows he is the one. I listen to him. He takes the initiative, and I respond. 
Lots of promise texts I'd like to share that's been meaningful to me, but there may be somebody else. Just stand and give a promise text uh, or a song that's meant a lot, something you'd like to say to encourage <laughs> but uh, the verse that has always stuck with me and helped me through difficult times is Isaiah 41 10. And it says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. So I think that anything that you pass through, just remember that those are ups and downs in this life, and nothing is sure that the love of God is sure and constant and will always be. Amen. Amen. I love you all too. Erica, um, for you, I'd like to let you know Psalm 69 that you probably know about it. Creating me, O Lord, a new heart and a new spirit for me. And right now, you created a new heart. Right now, you've told your old heart that you no longer have need for it. That you're going and you're going to renew and you're going to have a new spirit. And I hope that that verse will just continue to grab hold of you. And you have so much energy. You can tell, I can tell you have so much love. And may God use that love and that energy to bring countless of individuals to the kingdom. Because the, the decision that you've made today is going to inspire a lot more people to make that same decision. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Uh, Erica, yeah. uh, I figured I'd jump on in. <laughs> um, so a while back I highlighted this verse because I always go back to it for a reminder for me. And it says, it's Matthew 21, verse 22. It says, in all things, whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believe it, you shall receive. So in your walk with God, when you ask for guidance from him, he will, he will guide you. And uh, we're we all really proud of you. Amen. Amen. Good. Good. 
one that I have for you. It's a Bible verse that's my favorite, Jeremiah 29, 11. And it's on that plaque to remind you of your baptism. Okay, thank you, thanks. I have one that uh, uh, my father-in-law passed away, Claire Dominey. He shared with me when I was baptized and it stuck with me because it's all about our relationship with Jesus. And it's Philippians 1 6. It says, Being confident of this very thing, that we that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. It's not he might, he will. Yeah. That's a confidence. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So I think you can see that you have a beautiful supportive community. And they they are happy when they see you here from week to week. You're encouraging them, just like they are an encouragement to you as you continue your walk. And I believe the pastor's wife has something for you. Congratulations, Erica. Thank you. Church family got you a present here. Thank you. May God bless you in all, in all his ways. Well, are you guys hungry? <laughs> I'm hungry. And I'm not sure. We have a closing hymn, 195, There Shall Be Showers of Blessings. I can see there are already showers of blessings right here. So let's stand up and sing hymn number 195, Showers of Blessings.
America. I'm so proud and excited and happy to see that you've given your life to God in baptism. And from all, all of us in Bay Roberts, we truly love you and thank you for being a part of this. For the rest of us, um, downstairs, we will have a potluck for the Pathfinders. I'm excited that we are together. We can eat together, and there will be um, time for us to listen as Joseph and I will be sharing some things. And uh, amen, and God bless all of you for being here today. If you'd like to... Um, be with Erica. I'm going to have her stand right in front of the offering plates.